Welcome to this informational video on basic computer skills brought to you by the Manitoba Peer-to-Peer -peer Network at Manitoba eHealth. The Peer-to-Peer -peer Network is a resource for those in the healthcare profession looking to improve the management of patient care with an EMR or other health technologies. Please visit our website for more information about Manitoba Peer-to-Peer -peer Network supports and services focused on optimizing use of your EMR. Implementing an EMR can take significant time and effort. This process can become more challenging without a basic understanding of computer skills. To optimize use of your EMR, certain basic skills should be mastered, and many clinicians have not had the opportunity to learn these very important basics. Taking the time to become familiar with a few tips and tricks will make you more efficient, reduce stress and strain, and improve your daily productivity so you can focus on quality patient care. In this video, we will demonstrate a variety of tips and tricks, including keyboard shortcuts such as selecting items, cut, copy, and pasting content, and undoing previous actions. We will review how to navigate using your mouse and how to select text to perform different actions. Next, we will demonstrate how to manage the windows on your screen, how to minimize and maximize the screens, and how to manage multiple windows and split screens or adjust screens for better viewing. Finally, we will highlight a few different ways you can find help when you're on your own. Let's begin by learning about proper use of your mouse. The mouse gives you control over your computer through points and clicks. Simply move your mouse to the location of your choice, identified by the cursor or arrow on screen, and then click the appropriate mouse button to generate an action. The most common mouse function is left click. Simply depress and release the left button on the mouse in a relatively quick fashion. This function is typically used to select an item on your screen or relocate your cursor to a specific location, such as when creating or editing a document or placing your cursor in a discrete data field to enter information. Clicking the left mouse button twice in rapid succession is called a double click. This function is used to open items on your computer, such as when opening a file or opening a program from your desktop. Many programs, including EMRs, offer extra mouse functionality using the right mouse button. Single clicking the right mouse button in some locations will access a specialized list of menu items that are context specific. For example, right-clicking on a word in a Word document will open editing menus allowing you to change the font or size of your text, along with many more options. An additional feature that may be available on your mouse is a scrolling wheel. Running your finger along the wheel allows you to scroll up or down on the current page quickly and easily, providing easier access to longer documents or web pages. There is one other less common mouse function to cover before we move on, the mouse over. This occurs when you hover your mouse over an on-screen image to activate an underlying link or function. This is common in websites to identify areas in the content where you can link to other material. This is also a common feature in some EMRs, providing access to more granular information, such as when hovering over a lab result value to see the date, units of measure, or other key pieces of information to support your clinical decision making. Now let's talk about using your mouse to navigate through text or highlight areas of text you may wish to edit or relocate. To highlight pieces of text, depress the left mouse button, but this time hold the key down as you drag your mouse across the chosen text. When you get to the end of the area you wish to highlight, simply release the left mouse button. This is known as click and drag. The text you've chosen should be highlighted. You can now click on a menu item or use the right-click functionality or keyboard shortcuts to proceed with an action. To take this a step further, you can use keyboard shortcuts to enhance your ability to select different types of text. If you double-click on a word in a document, you will automatically highlight that entire word, which is quick and easier than trying to click and drag, especially for individual words. If you have a list of words or separate words or sentences you would like to highlight individually in a document, Hold down the control key continuously as you left click on each word. Release the control key when complete. You will see that all the words become highlighted as you add them. You can now perform an action to that group of words, for example, changing them to bold font. To select larger portions of continuous text, left click at the start of the text, hold down the shift key, and then click at the end of your chosen text. You will now have selected the text between the two previous left click locations. You can also easily select all the text within a document, for example when wanting to change the font style or font size for an entire document. Simply use the shortcut key Control a Hold down the control button on your computer and then click the A key. The entire document should now be highlighted. Now that you can select text, let's talk about one of the most common functions needed when using your computer, using the cut, copy, and paste feature to move content from one area to another. 
The Cut feature removes text or images from your screen so you can move it elsewhere. The Copy feature copies text or images so you can add it somewhere else while also maintaining it in its original location. To place cut or copy text, use the Paste function once you've placed your cursor in the right location. To use Cut, Copy, and Paste, you first need to select the text or image. In some programs, you can access menu items for Cut, Copy, and Paste, such as in Microsoft Word, but in most cases, you can access them through right-clicking to access a context-specific menu. To streamline this even further, in Windows, you can use the shortcut keys Ctrl-X for Cut and Ctrl-C for Copy. Once in the chosen location to move the text or image, you can again use a menu item if available, right-click for the special menu, or use the shortcut key Ctrl-V. The cut or copied material will remain available to paste until you cut or copy another piece of text or image to replace it. This means you can repetitively paste material if applicable, or if you make an error. If you use Mac devices, you can replace the Control key with the Command or Apple key to the left of the spacebar to activate the same shortcuts. If you make a mistake, you can use the shortcut Control z or Command z on a Mac to undo the previous action. In many cases, these shortcut keys can be used within your EMR, for example, when creating an encounter, chart note, or referral letter, providing you with more flexibility and efficiency and reducing the need for duplication of work. There are a few other shortcuts that can be useful to navigate through text, and many of these also work within your EMR. Many people know the tab key can be used to indent information. You can also use your tab key to move your cursor to the next field in your EMR, or on an online form, to reduce the need to click with your mouse. If you'd like to move to the previous field, you can use the shortcut Shift tab. To move through words in your text, you can use Control and the right or left arrow keys to jump along word by word. This can be useful when editing copy, for example, when adding in punctuation or pasting in moved material. When navigating through a larger document, you can quickly jump to the very beginning or very end of the document by using the shortcut Control Home or Control End. This can avoid the need to use the scroll bar or scrolling wheel on your mouse and also works when navigating on web pages. As per the previous shortcuts, if you use a Mac environment, the Control key would be replaced with the Command or Apple key to perform these same shortcuts. Most computer systems open programs and files using Windows on screen, so it is important to learn how to manage multiple windows open at one time and how you can use shortcuts and quick tips to improve your computer experience. Let's begin by learning about the Minimize, Maximize, Restore, and Close buttons. These are located in the top right corner of open screens in a Windows environment and in the top left for those working on Mac systems. The X button is used to close a window. This will close the associated document or web content within that window. The Minimize button appears as a dash or line and allows you to keep a program or document open, but hides or docks the window in your taskbar at the bottom of the screen. Simply click on the docked or hidden item to maximize back to the original screen size. The Restore Down or Box button, this is the green button on Macs, can be used to resize the window to give you access to your desktop or to better organize or view multiple screens. It typically defaults to about a 50% window size. You can move this window around by clicking in the taskbar at the top of the screen and then dragging the window on the screen. You can also resize this window in a horizontal, vertical, or diagonal direction by moving your cursor to the edge of the window or corner of the window until a double arrowed line shows. Simply click your mouse and drag the arrow to resize as needed. Note that you are not able to resize a window that is maximized fully. You will need to click the Restore Down button to enable the resizing function. Another great window feature to learn is how to split windows on your screen. You can easily split two windows so that they share the screen 50-50. This is very useful when comparing documents or when needing to reference material in one document when writing in another document. Many EMRs allow this functionality, so you could reference chart information, like medical history, on one side of the screen while creating a referral letter on the other side. To split screens, simply click in the taskbar at the top of the first window, then click the Windows key and the left or right arrow key. Repeat this process, clicking the taskbar in the other window and pressing Windows key and the other arrow key. You can work in each window independently simply by clicking your mouse into the window to begin. You can also resize the windows based on your preference. For those using Mac systems, there is similar functionality available, which will vary depending on the device being used. Throughout this video, we have demonstrated a series of keyboard shortcuts. 
Let's now review other common keyboard shortcuts to improve your computer experience. For those people using Macs, the control key can be replaced by the command key or Apple key to the left of the spacebar on Apple keyboards to apply the same shortcuts. We've already covered cut, copy, paste and how to undo the last action performed on your computer. In comparison to undoing an action, sometimes it can be useful to quickly repeat an action and you can use the shortcut control Y. This can be very useful when adding rows or columns to tables or spreadsheets without having to go back into menus. There are several shortcuts you can use to edit font in documents as well. Shortcuts exist such as control B for making text bold, control I changes font into italics, and control U underlines text. You can also use your keyboard to align text or images to margins or center them. Aligning text to the left is known as left justified and you can use the shortcut control L. Control R aligns to the right margin and control E will center justify. In closing, let's review a few tips about finding help when you're on your computer. Don't be afraid to click on buttons and menu items to see what they do. Remember, you can usually use the control Z undo action if you make an error. In most cases, if you're going to delete something in error, you will get a warning box. If you click buttons and notification boxes open, be sure to read them before clicking OK. In general, programs will tell you their secrets. In many cases, you can use the mouse over technique to hover over menu items and informative boxes will appear providing more information. Most programs have built in help menus or search fields for support. This can often be accessed by clicking question mark icons. Remember that the internet can be a great source of information. In most cases, you will not be the first person to have that question. Open your web browser of choice and use a search engine like Google. Simply type in your question, such as, how do I insert a table into a Word document? Google has new quick feedback windows that outline the answer step by step. A good rule of thumb to follow is that if you've asked the question well, you will find your answer 80% of the time in the first three to five results. Also, don't forget to ask coworkers. Many businesses have at least one person considered tech savvy who can give you advice and show you quicker or more efficient ways of doing things. Friends and family can be a great source of support as well. The younger generations are extremely comfortable using technology and often can be wonderful sources of information and tips to improve your computer use. There are many online videos demonstrating both basic and more advanced computer skills. Take the time to watch a few videos and find a trainer instructor that makes sense to you. Many online training programs and videos come in a series which you can follow to further advance your skills. There's plenty of choice and most of them are free. Thank you for watching this video on computer basics brought to you by the Manitoba Peer-to-Peer -peer Network. Please visit our website to access our EMR video library for more tips and tricks and for more information on the supports and services we offer to improve the management of patient care with an EMR. If you have any questions, please contact us at peacesoffice at manitoba-ehealth.ca or phone 204-926-3482. Thanks again for watching.